Hello, how are you guys doing? Today I'm going to spend time uh, a little bit talking about uh, RA flares and um, you know basically giving you some tips on how you can reduce the frequency of flares as well as um, you know what you can do to manage these flares once you get a flare. All right. Uh, so first of all, what is a flare? So again, going back to uh, you know how I was going to define a flare. A flare is actually pain, uh, which is like acute pain. So you suddenly get like a severe attack of pain that is like excruciating. You know, it's really really painful, and um, and uh, mostly it is um, it is um, combined with um, a lot of stiffness. You know so a lot of stiffness along with pain is present stiffness meaning then for me like you know my flares when i would get like a shoulder flare up that means my it would start by you know i feel like okay this pain is like really it's it's like this joint has become very painful and then i know that it's a flare because within two hours or two or three hours of the first onset of pain it just starts building up it just starts increasing and increasing in intensity so i know that's a flare and then you know at its peak it's the pain is like really really bad it's like you know on a scale of zero to ten i remember once my doctor asking me how bad it was and i told him like it's beyond ten you know that's how painful it is so and then it's very stiff so i would not be able to move the shoulder at all oh my god just uh, thinking about that um, gives me the jitters because that is that's an unpleasant thing boy and that's the reason i want to talk about it today because i have really had my share of flare ups and you know the first uh, couple years after being diagnosed with re and they were very very painful so i would get a shoulder flare up and you know which would last for two three four days sometimes you know the pain being intense the first two days and then slowly beginning to subside so that is what a flare means it's flare means like a sudden onset of severe pain and which lasts only for a short period of time and thankfully right and then it goes away and then you're back to your disease as it was like your rest of the pain which is you know which means that sometimes your fingers right finger joints are kind of always affected and there you always feel stiffness in them in the morning so all that continues to be there your knees you know feeling the stiffness all that you know remains to be there but flare means when you get like that severe attack right severe bout of pain in one usually just one uh, part of your body like one joint at a time at least uh, thank god for that right uh, so that is the definition of a flare-up and initially um, you know when I was uh, diagnosed first and um, even though I started on medication these flare-ups continued to happen so that's why I want to first um, you know talk about how you know you can try to reduce the frequency of these flares and these are things that I have learned over the period of um, four, four and a half years now after being diagnosed and after going through, you know, a bunch of different trials, trial and errors, you know, trying different things. If you want to hear my complete, um, you know, story in terms of how I overcame, um, you know, RA and how I got better, you can read more about it on my website, uh, on my About Me page. And also, I'll also leave a link in the description box here. I have also put two other videos about, you know, uh, my experience, my RA story. So you can watch that as well. But uh, going back to the flare up, I want to concentrate on the flare up and, um, you know, want to talk about first how you can man uh, reduce these flares. So number one for that is actually limit mental stress. Now, I know it's very, you know, it's easier said than done, right? It's Sometimes it's very hard to eliminate the stress that is happening in your life. Um, Work-related stress is pretty common and that's what I had too. And um, 
uh, but it's a known fact and you know dr um, sarah valentine who's um, you know the founder of the paleo mom she has written several um, articles and even a book uh, on the paleo approach and and she talks about how stress can you know have there is evidence actually that stress can actually you know because it triggers cortisone it actually has an impact on your on the leaky gut meaning it you know it can trigger the immune system and because RA is an autoimmune condition that is there is like a direct uh, relationship there you know correlation between stress and uh, pain or you know or aggravation of disease and or flare-up and I experienced that so when I first started on my healing journey you know even though I had just begun my diet you know the AIP diet but that um, I had not uh, not been doing it for a long enough time to actually see results from the diet but the first thing that I did was actually I also quit my job at the same time because I knew it was stressful and actually within two weeks of quitting my job I began to feel better better and my flare-ups reduced so that's why the number one thing I want to you know tell everybody is to reduce try to limit the mental stress in your life Again, it's not easy to do it. You know, it's not as easy as, you know, quitting your job. Not everybody can do it. However, you know, look at your life and see what are areas where you can, you know, do some improvements, you know, or incorporate some stress reduction uh, techniques like, you know, meditation or, you know, just mindfulness techniques and uh, things like that. And just enlist more support from your family, you know, talk to them, talk to your spouse if there is, you know, mental stress, a lot of mental stress happening that is causing your flare ups. OK, so that's the number one thing. Number two is actually limit physical stress too. And this is very uh, important when you talk about flare ups. So right now I am actually, um, you know, a very, you know, my disease is actually very well controlled in term, um, with respect to my flare ups and, you know, I and any inflammation in my joints. I'm pretty close to remission uh, according to my rheumatologist. But even then, uh, what I have noticed is that if I do increased physical activity, that is if I exert myself a lot physically, then I tend to get a flare up. So nowadays my flare ups are far and few in between. Again, I really thank the Lord for that. However, um, you know, one of the reasons, um, you know, why that is, is because I really consciously limit you know the amount of physical exertion i do like for example uh you know i i love to cook right and i always used to cook a lot and entertain a lot and throw a lot of parties uh have a lot of friends come over and at those times you know i'd be in the cook uh, in the kitchen cooking for like three four hours at a time now i i don't do that uh don't do that anymore because i know if i do that then i will get a flare-up uh, and especially lifting heavy pots. Um, so I just refrain from doing that now. Even though my shoulders are fine, you know, I can move them perfectly fine now. But, you know, my joints are not the same as they were before, uh, you know, RA had set in. So if I try to lift like a heavy pot now, then, you know, within three or four hours, my shoulder begins to begins to start hurting and then that night i end up having a flare up on in my sh <clears throat> in my shoulder so that's the reason you know i limit the physical stress and this is just one example for me you know in terms of uh, lifting heavy things and my shoulder but the same thing holds true in terms of in general physical stress like don't exert yourself too much uh, you know, always, you know, I'm not saying that limit your physical activity. In fact, I always stress that exercise is an essential component uh, to healing and to um, reducing the inflammation in your body. What I'm trying to tell you is like, don't over overdo it, you know, because if there's a limit to exercise and to doing normal stuff, like things like lifting heavy things is actually not exercise. It is meaning putting load a heavy load on your one particular shoulder you know so try and avoid doing things like that okay so that's number two and then number three is actually diet 
so that's the other important piece which i have already talked about in my you know other video um my ra story and that i'm specifically talking about diet so you can watch that however i'll again reiterate here uh, how diet is very important and i have personally experienced this and so have other people so you know there is really a lot of evidence now which says that food can trigger uh, the inflammatory response or basically can trigger the autoimmune response which is what you know ra is ra is an autoimmune condition so when you eat certain foods um, that triggers the inflammatory response just because your gut is leaky there is some you know perme your permeability of your intestine is affected and that actually uh, triggers the immune response so one way to you know kind of reduce that is by limiting the amount of potentially um, sensitive foods and how do you know what foods you are sensitive to so there are um, the easiest way to go about uh, finding that out is to actually follow an elimination diet an elimination diet means you avoid um, you know all the potential allergens so like dairy gluten um and um you know those are the big ones dairy gluten nuts um etc and you can actually you know i really recommend you following aip or the autoimmune protocol because that is very you know uh, scientifically um a kind of uh, um designed where you can it eliminates a lot of the potential inflammatory substances and so you do follow that for a period of time and then after that you slowly begin to add things you know the good things you of course there are some things that you never add back like processed foods right uh, but however there are some other healthy foods that you can keep, you know add one by one and then you can gauge and you can come to know how your body is reacting to those foods so following the zip diet has actually helped me to reduce my frequency of flare ups and um, that combined with medication and lifestyle has um, you know proven really instrumental in bringing me close to remission so therefore i really really advocate that you you know look into your diet if you do not want to you know start by doing a very strict elimination diet what you can do is at least you can start eliminating some of the important um you know triggers like dairy and gluten you know and you can do it one by one at least and then that way you can try and figure out if those those substances are um you know triggering your flares and by avoiding them are you you know able to reduce the uh, frequency of your flare ups the other thing you can do is you can also if you're not ready to follow an um, elimination diet what you can do is you can potentially maintain a food journal so that you write down at the end of each day you write down what foods you had you know what you had for breakfast what you had for lunch what you had for dinner just write it every day it will take you like what 10 minutes every day to note that down in a, you know in a spreadsheet or in a uh, on a piece of paper and a or in a diary you can uh, do that and then um when you do get a flare up episode what you can do is go back and look at your journal and see what you ate you know that particular day or you know two days prior because the flare ups can take you know anywhere between one to two days to potentially or trigger you know after you eat eat the particular food so look back into your journal and then identify you know circle those potential foods that are that you think might be the ones and then it will take a while you know when you maintain a food journal you can't like instantly put um you know two and two together and say this is what's causing my flare it will you know you'll have to keep looking at it and maintaining it over a period of time will you know help you establish so if twice that is happening like you know if uh, green peppers or bell peppers um you eat and then you get a flare up and then you know that particular time you may notice that you have also had some other things like you also had uh, brussels sprouts and you also had you know some oranges so you're not sure if you know it's that or the peppers but then again it happens and then again you look back and this time you again see the peppers 
so then you know you kind of begin to you know draw some connections there so that's another thing you can do there's another thing you can do is actually work with your practitioner and um, you know functional medicine doctor or a nutritional therapist and who can order food sensitivity tests for you so in my practice now i have started including that uh, for my clients some of my clients you know i generally first suggest doing an elimination diet because that helps to heal the gut as well and you know helps to really reduce um, the flare as well as reduce inflammation however some people are not ready for that and then in such individuals food sensitivity testing can be huge because then they can really identify the most um, you know the highest uh, um, or sensitive foods for them and then that way avoiding them will help to reduce the number of flares they experience all right so that's about how to manage flares in general and now i'm going to share some tips on when you actually experience a flare episode an acute episode of um, pain how you can go about managing those Tip number one, apply heat or ice pack directly to the site of pain and or you can alternate between these two. If you cannot tolerate ice, if your pain increases with ice, then avoid it and use only heat. Next, have a painkiller. It's not okay to be in so much pain. So it's okay to take painkillers, Tylenol, Ibuprofen or Aleve. Up to three grams of Tylenol per day is safe and you can take it safely. Next, apply a pain relieving cream like, you know, over the counter uh, ones that are available. Avoid the ones that have capsaicin in them. You can also explore Ayurvedic oils like Mahananda and the natural pain cream from Feel Good Lab. Tip number four, drink bone broth or chicken soup. Bone broth is incredibly healing and it uh, helps to reduce the flare. All the nutrients help to reduce inflammation in your body. So do that. Tip number five, eat light meals or skip meals. And I have seen in my personal experience that when I eat lightly, uh, when I have a flare, it makes the flare go away faster. That's because your digestion gets a break. Tip number six, consume turmeric or curcumin. If you already are taking curcumin as part of your supplement regimen, then increase the dose and that will provide you with pain relief. Tip number seven, rest the joint. Don't try to move it. In a flare, when you try to move or exercise the joint, then the pain gets aggravated. So you do not want that. And therefore, it's always best to rest the joint. And in a day or two, it will get better. Tip number eight, rest and relax your body in general. Use uh, pranayama or breathing exercises as well as do meditation that will rest your body overall and helps you get better faster. So take a book and relax. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like the video and also subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Instagram and Facebook.